Okay. So that's a, a long introduction to saying that both of these two types of religious um, occasions, spiritual occasions, have very, very different types of truth associated with them, very, very types, very different types of reality that are associated with them. Um, one of them is coming from a relatively low stage of growing up. The other is coming from the highest stage of waking up. And these, these are night and day. This, what's interesting is how individuals arrived at these stages of waking up, and particularly the higher stages. Because here we find that they actually have a methodology that's very, very similar to science. And in this sense, if, you, if we look at um, some of the, the crucial elements of, of, of modern science, um, we, we find that there are generally at least three major components to knowledge that we tend to take as, as, as scientifically true or real. Um, the first is an injunction or um, some sort of methodology. It, it's generally of the form, um, if you want to know this, do this. So if you want to know if it's raining outside, go to the window and look. If you want to know if a cell has a nucleus, invent a microscope, cut, cut a cell, section a cell, stain it, look. Um, if you want to know if, if Jupiter has nine moons, uh, invent a telescope and look. So, so, so there's a certain kind of, well, what Kuhn called an exemplar uh, paradigm, a, a certain action that is generally felt to be necessary, even mathematics, draw two parallel lines, that kind of thing. Once you do that, you will have, generally speaking, um, a direct experience or a data or an illumination will occur. Um, so you're looking down the microscope, then you're going to get data. You're going to have a, an actual experience of, of, of the reality that that injunction has introduced you to. And so that is this data or illumination or direct experience is, uh, is crucial to science because it's generally what they call evidence. So this isn't coming from just a thought or dogma or a belief system. It's, it's an actual direct evidential uh, illumination. And then once you've done that, maybe you've gone to the window, that's your injunction, and then you've looked, and you, if it's raining, actually, you see the rain. That's your data. That's your illumination, your experience. But you could be hallucinating or goofy or something, so you ask somebody else to come to the window and look with you. And that's the third strand. It's either a confirmation or a rejection. Some people put it uh, in strong terms and maintain that it's a fallibility principle. Um, more generically, it's simply a group experiential repetition of people that have done your injunction, had a data, and then compared results. Now, that's actually, those three steps are exactly what every one of the major spiritual contemplative traditions does. So if you take something like Zen Buddhism, that, that's not a belief system. You're not meant to memorize you know, a metaphysics or let alone a mythic system. Um, you are, first of all, given a series of injunctions on things that you need to do with your mind if you're going to get access to this data. And that includes uh, a couple of different types of meditation. All of them have the net effect of having awareness disidentify from the objects of awareness. So mindfulness itself is just a direct objectification of everything that's arising. You just see it all as an object. Uh, I'm aware of this, I'm aware of that, I'm mindful of this, I'm mindful of that. That's just converting all of these things that really are just objects, um, and you're disidentified with them. So you're, you're falling more and more in just the witness, the pure witness. And if you continue doing that, and there might be um, certain added exercises that go along with that, but various injunctions are, are brought forth. In other words, actual methodology, things you actually have to do. And then that will bring you to the second step, which is an actual illumination, a data. In Zen, it's called Satori. 
or can show. And that's when you directly have this immediate experience of your real self or even deeper, an experience of this unity with everything. The Tibetans call that one taste. So either one of those will constitute a satori, or what's also called a kensho, which means seeing your true nature. Um, and then you have to check that with the community of people that have done the injunction and had the data, and then you compare your data with theirs. And uh, for the most part, your data should agree with what's already been done because these injunctions have been done in most instances <coughs> for decades, centuries, even millennia. And so the same way if, if you're looking at the structure of water, you're probably going to find that it's H2O. If you find something different, you really better check it with other people. Um, so so the, the, these three strands are what we find in virtually every contemplative tradition. So it really is a, a, a series of um, epistemological verification procedures. And that seems to be one of the reasons that we do find these broad family similarities in, in most of the great uh, meditative uh, traditions. And that's why Dan Brown can find these, you know, five major stages and, and so on. And so if nothing else, these traditions um, give us a very good indication of at least one way to do a type of methodology that can be repeated and that most importantly shows that it's not just private <clears throat> i mean you can't train these things and just get a private experience that's the whole point of this kind of training is that you're making it public it's a public communicative exchange uh, and that's why there's that's why this knowledge can be passed on uh zen buddhism is said to you know go all the way back to Gautama buddha uh, probably didn't but the point is, it certainly went back to Bodhidharma uh, and has been passed forward for 1,500 years. Um, so there's a consistency to that. Um, and, and given the similarities both of the human brain among humans and the traditions would say, given the similarities in, in the actual ontological structure of the cosmos, um, then individuals who follow these particular type of injunctions have that particular type of data, compare it with a community of knowers. Um, there's going to be a broad similarity that we're going to find around the world in that. And, and that does indeed <coughs> be the case. So that's crucially important um, because this, again, you're not asking anything in terms of mere belief, let alone myths or dogma or anything like that. And that's why these traditions um, are always separated from the exoteric ones, which rely on just mere belief or myths or um, fairy tales, frankly. 